asking us to substitute in as we look at numbers 11, 12, right? Thir or 12, 13, 14, so 13 to 15. If we put in a number, so when I take a look at number 13, it's saying what's the square root of x squared? And my kid here yesterday was try numbers like x equals 1, x equals 2, and maybe x equals 4 for all of these. Because what it tells us to do is it says determine if it is sometimes always, and yesterday we did 12 together, right? We got sometimes. So you already have the work done for that. Okay? When I take a look at your 13, we're going to try 1 first. So I'm going to take the square root of 1 squared. What's 1 squared? 1 squared is what? 1, right? So when I am looking at this, for some reason my pen is not connecting right now. So if I'm looking at the square root of 1 squared, that's equal to 1, that's rational. How about if I take the square root of 2 squared? That's the square root of 4, that equals 2, that is rational. I try 4. The square root of 4 squared, that's 16. That's going to be rational. That one should be an always. always. Okay? You are doing the same thing with 14 and 15. Okay? So when you look at 14 and 15, you want to do them in the same way. You want to kind of check and plug in those numbers and replace x. Okay? If you're having problems with that, you want to check with me and I will gladly help you out. But I'm not going to do all of those. So we did 12 and 13. You guys got to do 14 and 15. Okay? Any other questions as you were looking at that? Yes? Uh, number, uh, 17. number 17. So number 17 says you, um, as you are taking a look at that one, it says your aunt offers you a square piece of rug and the area is 110 square feet. You want to use carpet in your room and your room is 10.5 by 11.2. So the question is, what is the square root, if we are looking at this, the square root of 110? So the side length is going to be the square root of our area, right? So the square root of our area was 110. And 110, if we are looking at that, and it says, um, will it fit? So this is where, like down below, we did our number lines. And we go, oh, 110? That's between the square root of 100 and the square root of 121, right? The square root of 100 is 10. The square root of 121 is 11. 221 is when I add those together. That's at 10 and a half. So 221, if I take 221 and I divide it by 2, I get 100 and 10.5, right? 110 then, that's going to be about, right? This is almost the same. We don't have to change that one. That was a nice one, right? You didn't have to estimate and go, oh, 115, it's going to be 10 point. So we're going to say that this is, good question, Johan, 10.5. Will it fit? It's possibly even a little less. So should it fit in our room? Yeah, yeah. that's a pretty good estimate. Because if, if this is 10.5, right, the square root of 110 is actually just going to be a little less. Okay? So should it fit? Yes. Okay? Other questions? All right. Yesterday, we turned papers in. Um, what did we turn in? So this is in your notes on A7. We turned in page 6, and we turned in page 10. ten. Some of you are going to get back your page 6 or 10. Some of you, if you need a scissors because you didn't cut yours out to hand in, you can turn them in in the back of the room. You're going to get some of these back, and as you get these papers back today, I'm only handing them back to the people who have, actually have to redo them. So if you get yours back, it has like a score of 1 out of 5, or 2 out of 5, or 3 or 4 out of 5. And it will say, redo, show your work. If you decide to never redo it, then that grade, grade stays as a 1 out of 5. If you decide to redo it, you get all the points. Now, 
I don't want this redone after we take our test on unit A, right? And it would probably be best if you did it before this quiz, because what was on here is what's actually going to be on the quiz, right? So if you get yours back today, that's what you want to do. Right now, you guys need to be taking notes. And so if you are looking up here, what is a cool number? So you're going to write these down. As I am, as I am handing back your papers, You're going to start by writing these down. And I'm going to ask different people to read through what I have up here. So as we are looking at these. So, grab what? Yep, right over that way or by the door. Okay. So, if I am taking a look. Um, Hunter, read that first one. What is the whole number? So, first off, we know that it is between, has zero and one, two, three, four, right? So, we're putting that down. So, if we are looking at that. Zach, you want to read the next one for Andrew? So when I'm looking at that one, and I go, oh man, that's a lot of information. Here, I'm going to put zero and the counting numbers, right? One, two, three, four. Here, it's whole numbers and opposites, right? Just means we're talking about it has to have negatives, right? If we are reading that next one, Cassidy, for a rational number. Do you want to read what it says for a rational number up there? Sure. Rational numbers are all numbers that can be written as a ratio of two numbers. This includes whole numbers, numbers, terminating difference between different and perfect so, some of you are in your notes on this page on A7, and some of you aren't on this page yet. Yours has squares in all of these regions. And as I'm looking at your squares, I'm okay that as you are doing these, that you show just kind of what I have highlighted. I'm okay with that. But you should be writing something down. So, like... This is what was, if I'm, if I'm looking, this is what was in that box, right? Right, so that was the box right there. Okay. Integers, opposite and whole numbers and opposites. Key thing, we're talking negatives. No fractions or decimals, right? When I talk about whole numbers or integers. And the nice thing is, is that whole numbers, all whole numbers are integers. Integers and whole numbers together make our rational, which are key thing written as a fraction, right? Written as a fraction. So if I'm writing down rational, written as a fraction. That should have been your reason yesterday. They include our whole numbers, integers, terminating and repeating, and our perfect roots, okay? If I continue looking at that, Lucy, you want to read what it says for irrational? Non-perfect roots. I know, it got way over here. So we're going to put not fractions, right? Key thing for irrational cannot be written as a fraction. Not a fraction. It is our non-terminating and non-repeating and non-perfect roots. And then when you look at this kind of circle Venn diagram that we have up here, you're going to notice that real numbers encloses all of them. So what that means, it says, what's a real number? 
I want you to put with what's a real number. It is every number on the number line. And real number is every irrational and rational. So a lot of the homework that you're doing today is actually going to simply be vocabulary stuff. You're going to be asked to identify if something's rational or irrational. You're going to be asked, oh, so in the vocabulary card it will say, what group is the rational and irrational a part of? Well, the rational and irrational is a part of real numbers, right? The real numbers is made up of all the rational and all the irrational numbers. It's everything on our number line, right? So as we look at that, that's part of what you're going to be doing. Um, if you have notebook paper, I'm going to have you take out notebook paper. We're going to do, right now, I want you to write down as many of these. And if you don't have notebook paper, raise your hand so that I can give you a piece of paper. Do this right now. Write out as many as you can. Go, one, four, nine, right? Go, go, go. Just raise your hand if you need paper. Do you need paper? Tonight's assignment. You have to have one. Yeah, do this right now on here. Do it right now in your, this is for your assignment tonight. This paper, don't do this now. Do this right in your notes. Copy this in your notes. It's it's there in your notes. Like we're not right. This is practice. It's right in your notes. This paper is for your assignment. I'm handing it out because when I the next thing when you're done doing this, I'm going to have you do this as part of your assignment. So raise your hand if you need notebook paper for your assignment. Yes. No. Keep going. I'm going to give you more time, right? So I'm right here. This is for the assignment we're going to do, okay? Um, so everyone has paper. Okay, you're doing this right. You're writing it down. It's right in your notes. From 121 to 144, I'm adding 23. And 144 to 169, I'm adding 25, right? And I'm going to keep going down. Now, the one thing on the test, some people today, we're going to take a little homework quiz with one of these just to see how you're doing. I had some people, like they'll go 169, and they'll go 296, and they'll go 2 to 25. They have to be in number order, right? Going from the smallest to the largest. It does not make sense for this to be 296 and then go to 225, okay, right? You're going from 14 squared to 5th, it has to get bigger. So, as you are looking at those, and remember, we talked about how this one is 6, 9, and 9, 6, right? So if I get 169, I know 196, okay? Again, looking at how we came up with those cubes, okay? So, you're going to have a little homework quiz at the end, right? I know it ends in a thousand, so I'm going to for sure get that one. I might get the first five here. And then tonight if I'm studying these, and this is where I really struggle, I might say and write. 19 squared is 361. 19 squared is 361. 19 squared is 361. Then I might have someone quiz me on it a little later. Then I might go 18 squared is. 18 squared is 324. 18 squared is 324. Oh, 8 cubed is 512. 8 cubed is 5. The ones that you need, say them and write them three to five times in a row, and it's going to start getting in your brain. You just got to practice them, okay? So, on this piece of notebook paper, please put at the top A7. So this is why I needed you to have notebook paper. Please put A7 at the top. And if you are going to look in your notes, this is in the notes for A4, right? Where we converted repeating decimals to fractions. So, any of you that got back papers today that said redo, okay, you want to hand them back into me after you've redone them. 
You're going to get all the points on those if I have your work. Okay? So this is on the notebook paper. Does anyone still need notebook paper? Okay? You are going to have your workbook open because we are doing problems in the workbook. But you're going to put down this problem. 0 0.174 repeats. Number two. 4.37 repeating. You've got to write these on the notebook paper. Okay? So, put your name on the top. Now, yesterday on the quiz, and we didn't take it in this class, when I told people to put their name, they just decided I only wanted their first name. I want your first and your last name on the top of this paper. First and last. You're going to have A7. Converting repeating decimals to fractions. So the answer back here, right, is going to be a fraction. Number two, 4.37 repeats. I would go at least halfway down the paper because you're only going to have four questions on this paper. So I would not do three as close as some of you have it. Why? Because you have a lot of room for work, right? You got to tell me that x equals the 100x. You got to do the subtraction. You got to do the division. Okay? So, number three, 5.421. These are uglier ones than what you had before. And number four, 0 0.8372. Now, when I look at number two, I can have it as an improper fraction, right? But number two, I also know is going to be equal to four and something, right? Why do I know it's four and something? Because this whole number out in front is four, right? So when I'm on the quiz and I'm doing the work, could I almost maybe do the work with just the 0 .37 and leave this? I could, but my hint is I would do the whole thing. So. Looking at one or two, which one should we take a look at? Because you're going to do three and four on your own. One or two. I don't care. I'll do either one. Cassidy, do you have one? No. Do you have a preference? Anyone have a preference? You want two? Do I have a vote for two? Two? Some of you don't care. Some of you want one? Let's do one. Number one. We're going to start off with what does x equal? x equals what? 0 0.174 what? 7474, right? Dot, dot, dot. So, I look at the problem and I go, oh, there's two numbers that repeat. I should multiply everything by what? By 100. times 100, right? And I'm going to take this side times 100. 100 times x gives me 100x equals, when I multiply by 100, how many place values do I get to move by decimal? Two. 100, two zeros, two places. I'm at 17 point, and now I'm going to keep writing this. 4, 7, 4, 7, 4. Dot, 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 right? Copy it down with us. We're putting right below that the minus 1x. Oh, that was 0 point, right? 0 point 1. Isn't this nice? 7, 4, 7, 4. If I would have multiplied by 10, and here's what I even had someone do in their homework. They were doing this. We were working on it in the last class, period four. And then when they multiplied by 100, they put this as 1.74. Now, I don't know why they did that, but nothing lined up for them to cancel. If I go 1.747, it never lines up, right? And our goal in doing the problem this way is that we want these back here to start canceling. So if you do your problem and they don't line up, you made a mistake. So now we can subtract. This is pretty nice now, right? 100 minus 1 is 99. Now I've been a surprise when some of you took 1,000 minus 1, you told me it was 99. 
Some of you did your subtraction on that page um, 10 and you said, oh, 100 minus 1 is a 100. You left 100x here. You actually are subtracting these, right? And then on this side, this works out pretty nice. 4 minus 0.4 minus 21 is 3, and I have 17.3. I am dividing both sides by 99. Everyone okay so far? But this is the answer I can't write up here. Someone want to raise your hand and tell me what do I have to do to finish it? I'm almost done. I'm so, so close. But I can't have 17.3. Yeah. Can you do it again? Uh, um, how can I get rid of this decimal? What could I multiply by? 10. Got it. 10. When I take 17.3 times 10, I end up with 173. And 99 times 10 gives us 990. And I, this is my year where I don't care if you simplify this, because you're just going to leave it like this. This is the answer, okay? You will have at least two of these on Friday's quiz. Each one is worth four points, okay? So this is more practice of that, okay? Turn to your workbook, to this A7. And it's all about joke sheets. And yes, the joke sheets, I need you to fill in the joke at the bottom because you never know if you get the right answer if you don't get the joke, right? If the words don't make sense. And I will tell you on this page, um, and actually on both pages, when you look at these answers, all the letters are right next to each other, okay? So, like, you have to decide, oh, this is where a word is, and this is, you know, like, you're going to have, um, like, the last four make a word, right? So, there's, it's just going to be different spaces. So, try to take a look at it. So, reading the directions, if you would, please, Ellen. Decide whether each of these decimals represents the rational number or the irrational number. Circle the letter in your top, appropriate column is consistent. So, you need to look really carefully. So, we're starting with the first one. I want you to just kind of look at, like, the first one's through about down here. And just try and circle which letter. Is it rational or is it irrational? These dots are telling us it keeps going, right? 135, 135, 135, definitely <coughs> rational, right? Keep going. Do at least through this 3.40764076407640764076. What is that one that I was reading? Rational or irrational? It's a repeating, right? What about the one above it? It keeps going, but is there any repeating or that means? It goes over here, right? So, if I was looking at yours and we're going down, right? Tell me what you have for the point six. Point six should be rational. Nolan, what do you have for the negative point two four two two four two 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 four two two two? Irrational. It's a pattern, right? But it does not repeat. Okay. Ramiro, what do you have for that next one? 0.29299299. Does it repeat? What repeats? So this is going to be that negative. This would actually be if we wanted to write it this way, 0.29, right? So this is rational. Okay. And it's easy to get mixed up on this. Okay, Tim, keep going. At negative point six zero 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 six zero zero point six. Irrational. Irrational. Okay. So we got this far down, and then the directions. This is where people. It says when you're finished. So you got to go all the way down. It says print the letter in the row of the boxes at the bottom. First, go down the column marked rational. That means I'm going to write all of these down first. 
So you do not want to go M-A-